So a few years ago, my daughter Caroline and I, I'm sitting here in her lab here at Harvard, we're over at the New England Aquarium where you can take a look at stingrays. They're swimming around this little pool and you can hold your hand in the water and the stinger will come by and you, you can feel it. So my daughter was leaning into the water to touch a stingray that was coming at her. And at the last moment, with just a little flick, it just moved in a completely different direction. So we have done a few projects to kind of explore this idea we had that all marine life forms, with the exception of crustaceans, almost all marine life forms, their musculature is designed to either move fluid through their body or to move their body through fluid. So what we decided to do was to reverse engineer the stingray to do a complete breakdown with our marine biomechanician collaborators of the muscle and how it's built inside the stingray and to build our own version of the stingray and to test our tissue engineering by looking at the hydrodynamics of how our stingray swam versus real stingrays. And we needed to activate the stingray and we developed the means by which we could build a tissue engineered, a light guided tissue engineered stingray made from rat. So the Parker Group and Sun Jin basically started thinking about the stingray because it's a relatively simple morphology um, that is planar uh, and yet it's capable of a tremendous amount of different uh, modalities in terms of locomotion. So these, uh, the, the choice of the organism was essentially uh, driven primarily by the experimental ability to manipulate and build. For me, the important aspect is to use the stingray as an inspiration to try and create a device that can sense, it can move, it can be actuated, it can respond. It's very early and yet the possibilities are wide open and endless for the future of biologically designed robotic systems and using biological tissues. So I think it's just, it's so hard to know where it's gonna go, just as in the 1940s, you couldn't have possibly predicted you know, modern cell phone, cell phones, which are essentially computers, um, and where that's gone. I think designing parts, replacement parts for um, you know, organs in, in transplant surgery, designing robotic organisms using biological tissues. I think those are all avenues that one can conceive we could go, but there undoubtedly new things will arise that we have no idea 